Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Scott Wheeler. Today we have a true celebrity with us, <laughs> Devaney Shawcat. For those of you who don't know Devaney, for many years she was a, a very, very popular radio personality and she was a champion of people suffering from cancer. Well, Devaney's here today to talk about her own battle with cancer. Welcome to the show, Devaney. Thank you very much for having me, Scott. I appreciate it. So how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Right. You know, I'm taking it day by day. You know, um, it seems, you know, I've known you now. I think, I think we both got lassoed into the radio station by the same guy. I think we did. Todd, <laughs> Todd Pronto. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you ended up with a lucrative career. I ended up uh, getting paid nothing, but that's okay. And I'm still <laughs> there. Uh, I but, pretty much get paid nothing too, actually. Right. So. But we both got lassoed into the radio station yes. in, in this world by, by Todd. So I've known you for quite some time. And this cancer diagnosis kind of didn't surprise you to some degree, did it? No, it really didn't. <clears throat> you know, I kind of always felt like and expected to eventually get cancer, as kind of morbid as that sounds. But um, I just didn't expect it to come so soon. Yeah, because you're, you lost your mother when she was how old? My mom died when she was 54, but right. she was originally diagnosed at 46 with breast cancer. Oh, really? So, you're, so you were much younger than her? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because cause we actually even go back, I've written about your journey, uh, about trying to bring awareness to preventative health care. I even went yeah. to your first mammogram. I, know, I, I, nice. I didn't quite go in all the way. But I was there because your mission that day was to just, because that was your first mammogram. It was. And I was there just to kind of record you coming out saying, uh, women, that's no big deal. Well, I had heard so many horror stories and people were calling the station, you know, you're going to cry, it's going to be horrific. And so I was expecting this horrible experience. And does it feel great? No. I mean, they're squishing your boobs. It's not going to feel... Great. But it, it wasn't like having. <laughs> but it was it, fine. It wasn't like having a metal vice. No. <laughs> you know. No, and I think you know they're really great about you know listening to you and you know um, I think they said one of the biggest things is just breathing. Right. You just have to remember to uh, breathe and and of course when they actually do take the the film if you will or the picture you have to hold your breath and. But they're really great about going slow, and, and um, the only part that really hurt was just, you know, pressing down of the chest muscle, like the upper chest muscles. But other than, and it wasn't really that bad at all. Right. Yeah, I remember that's what you said when you came out, and then we did a story. And I'm, you know, I think, um, I think people like you, and I, I've said this to other people, people like you actually save lives because, you know, we... Um, you sometimes snap people into reality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like A, the, uh, the procedure isn't that bad. But the other thing is, is you sitting here right now, and I, I've told, you know, I'll tell you this, is you will, today's show will save somebody's life. No I doubt, so. no doubt about it. Because, you know, even Devaney can get cancer. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, I think cancer happens to other people. We love to we love to pretend that it happens to other people. Um, so let's talk about you didn't you had to actually do some convincing of people that you had cancer. I did. I uh, found a lump in my left breast um, at the end of April, mm. um, early May, and <clears throat> I had had mammograms. I started having mammograms when I was thirty because my mom died of breast cancer, and breast cancer is very prevalent on my mom's side of the family. I have a I've had numerous aunts pass away from breast cancer as well, cousins. Um, so we wanted to kind of get a jump on things. I started when I was 30 to have my first. And so I had, you know, always done self-checks and I had found lumps before and uh, this one felt different. And I just, I had a really, this gut instinct just told me that it wasn't good. And I think sometimes it's hard to trust that gut instinct. Sometimes mm -hmm. we convince ourselves that we're just being, you know, mm -hmm. overdramatic or, or, you know, making something really into a bigger thing that it doesn't have to be. And, and, you know, I think you have to remember you get those feelings for a reason. And I knew that something wasn't right. And I had three different doctors uh, tell me that it was nothing. And, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It was just a fibrinoma. 
you know, it, it wasn't cancer. It couldn't be. So that meant you couldn't get a um, mammogram or whatever you had to get? Yeah, well, originally I went to my primary care uh, for something else, actually. Uh, I had the flu or something, I can't remember. And I told him about the lump. He did a breast exam and said, well, you know, I think you're fine. It's a fibrinoma, but you know, you're seeing a hematologist oncologist anyway, because I have a rare blood disease. So I actually see an oncologist for that because they, they double mm -hmm. up their major hematology and oncology. And he said, so what I'll do is I'll let him do a breast, exa breast exam and see what he says. And then if he wants to order a mammogram, you know, he can. Uh, when I saw him, he did a, a breast exam, told me it was nothing, uh, told me that it was probably just a fibrinoma and it wasn't a big deal. Um, and I told him, I said, you know, I, I really would like to have a mammogram anyway, just to, you know, ease my mind, if anything. Um, and so we said, all right, I'll order one. But, you know, time kind of passed. I, I'm not really sure how that all happened, but it took a, a good month and a half before I actually had my mammogram. And even after I had the mammogram and an ultrasound, I still had a doctor who looked at the ultrasound and told me, while we were waiting for the biopsy results, told me that it was nothing. So three different doctors. And But you always felt... I just knew. Right. I knew. And so when, when the results came back, what did you, how did you react? You know, I went by myself. I, I think, you know, it's one thing to really believe that you have cancer or to have that feeling, but it's another thing to have someone look at you and say, you have cancer. I mean, that was, um, it was, that was a really surreal moment, uh, sitting in the doctor's office and having him look at me and, and say, you know, you were right. And I think maybe there was a little bit of hope that maybe I was wrong. Maybe, you know, I really mm. didn't have cancer and it wasn't a big deal. And, and so for him to kind of look at me and say, you did, it was very surreal. I was okay during the appointment. You know, I think immediately things just start kind of unwinding in your mind and, and my mind was everywhere. I don't think I heard another word after what he said, honestly. Um, it wasn't until I got in my car and I realized, you know, okay, this is really happening. And then I started crying. Right. Well, yeah, that's interesting. You, you just said, so I have a friend who's a cancer doctor and he said that a lot of times that's what happens. You hear that word cancer and then after that it's yeah. like it's like you're, you, you just blank out and so what your experience was I think a lot, a lot of people because you know to be real cancer is a scary word. It is. But let's be real about cancer today is as, as my friend uh, Dr. Lockridge says is um, this is an exciting time for cancer research. It's an ex exciting right. time for beating cancer because just 10 years ago, you know, diagnosis of cancer was pretty tough. Right. Now it's, you know, now it's, I won't say it's routine, but it's, you know, the odds are almost stacked in everybody's favor now, well, right. within reason. Well, and I think the biggest thing is early detection. Right. And, and, you know, if I hadn't, if I had a, um, an invasive ductal cancer mm. and it was pretty, uh, it was moving quite quickly and they ended up moving my surgery up um, over a month early because the tumor had grown. And they told me I wasn't scheduled for another mammogram until next year. And if I had waited, it probably would have been at least a stage four. Mm. So if I hadn't have advocated you know, for myself and, and my body, I mean, who knows what would have happened. Right, and you know, that's, that's the thing is, is I, I do know that, like, I would not want to be a doctor. I, I, I think their work, I, I, I would hate the pressure of it. Right. But on the other hand is, and, and I do know that they probably get a lot of hysterical people. Oh, I'm sure. Um, especially with kids. Like I had a, you know, in my life, we almost lost a child because we were just, you know, basically called hysterical, you know, mm -hmm. new parents and everything. Well, it ended up being a horrible, horrible story that ended up thankfully at the last minute being a great thing. But some, so in other words, my wife had that instinct Right. The same instinct that yeah. you had. And sometimes those instincts are wrong. In my wife's case, they were right. In your case, they exactly. were right. And I, I would rather have you run to the doctors and be wrong than not run to the doctors right. and be right. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and that's what, you know, I, I, I kind of said to the doctors, you know, I hope that you're right. I hope that this is nothing, but 
I, I need to know for myself, I, I need to, you know, have, the, have a mammogram done at least and uh, just so I can ease my mind. Right. Um, so, you know, because it, it does seem kind of ironic that here you are, you and your, your, your former sidekick, Todd Pronto, you've done so much to raise awareness about cancer. Mm -hmm. You've raised money for uh, people with cancer to help make their lives easier. You've you've raised money for cancer research, but then on the other hand, you've also raised money for hunger and just about anything there is. And you also were involved with Relay for Life. So it just seemed a bit ironic that here you are, the Pied Piper of yeah. cancer and, and preventative health care, and here you are. I know. You know, I, I really do believe that everything happens for a reason. And, um, you know, having cancer sucks. It's it's not fun. It's it's scary, and you just you really don't know. Um, but I'm trying to use this experience and turn it into a positive one. And and if I can help people, you know, younger women who you know doctors might look at you and say, you know, you're only 33. You know, you, you can't have cancer. Mm -hmm. It can happen to anybody. You know, cancer doesn't know any boundaries or limitations, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter how old you are or your history. You know, you have to be proactive and advocate for yourself. Right. And uh, a couple weeks ago, or last week, as you know, uh, I had Todd Pronto on my show mm -hmm. and Wayne Warner, who hosted a, uh, they both hosted a uh, concert for you. And we were talking, as you watched the show, we were talking about you. Yeah. And I think people like you also do something else. It, it's not only prevent, you you get the dialogue going. You get words that we don't like to think about. Like here we you know here are three guys where we were we were talking about colonostomies. <laughs> yeah. And you know uh, those you know once you hear other people like you talking about mammograms and then people start talking about colonos. It, it becomes part of the dialogue. Right. And part of the dialogue then means ah you know let's go. Right. And uh, you know we did. Um, uh, we Wayne did try to convince your sidekick Todd to have an on-air <laughs> colon screening. That would be exciting. Uh, and but he, he that did never. No, uh, he did opt for a prostate uh, check. Exam. Though. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know. So I guess that makes sense. But you know, it, in all seriousness, is you can at least laugh about these words that maybe we wouldn't have been using if it wasn't for people like you. Right. Because I, I, I just think, as I said, uh, you're going to save lives. Sitting in that chair, you don't look like a superhero, but you are. Well, I am wearing my Superman glasses. So oh, are you? I mean, I don't want to brag, so, but. So tell me about this groundswell of support for Devaney, because you're, you're used to being the groundswell yeah. for other people. Now there's a groundswell for you. How do you feel? I hate it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, this has been one of the hardest parts about this. You know, I'm a very independent person. I've been on my own since I was 17. Um, I've done everything on my own. And so to kind of step back and to be on the other side of things, accepting the generosity, it's, a, it's an amazing, overwhelming feeling, but I do, I feel guilty. I mean, I feel bad that people are donating money, even though I know that I need it. You know, I'm out of work for at least a couple more months, and um, people have been absolutely amazing. I mean, people I don't even know have, have reached out to me, and even if it's, you know, $10, $5, whatever, um, you know, it means a lot. It really does. It's it's very touching. Right. Yeah. As I said in my little spiel last week, is you know sometimes though, you've got to let people take care yeah. of you. And uh, so, um, what did you think about the concert that Todd and that Wayne did? That was amazing. It was um, it was very surreal. I was very nervous. Uh, I think that you know for me being on stage and being in charge of those things and helping other people I don't get nervous for that stuff I love that you know but being on the other side of it I was so nervous it was ridiculous yeah, like, you, I was shaking yeah, like, you were the ridiculous. center of attention okay here is a short clip that Wayne Warner he he wrote and sang a song for you it was amazing Ebony's a song you wanna hear Goes around. Her love 
She harbors better angels near the ground. And when she hurts, she cries with a smile. mother at such a young age mm -hmm. you've also used that though to help other people like when Todd you know Todd went through that long battle yeah uh, losing his mother you know the, the roller coasters of hope no hope hope no hope and you were there for him um, but didn't your experience with your mother kind of help you oh definitely you know I think um, I mean death is never uh, an easy thing to go through and like you said you know going through the entire it, it is a roller coaster and uh, you know battling the disease for such a long time um, you know and going through that and Todd you know some people know some people don't Todd's my best friend and and so of course I I was there and and uh, you know was happy and privileged to be as Todd part of as, as Todd told last week that no you guys are not secretly no. married no we're not secretly and married. Uh, <laughs> and and <laughs> so because uh, a lot of people actually think a lot of people, because yeah because you're 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 a guy you're, you're a man and a woman and well you know you've got to be right romantically involved but no you're best friends no yeah it was never uh, anything more than that I mean we've <laughs> we've slept <laughs> in the same bed together and you know we've done so many countless overnight events and ever anything and you, you know. actually brought him out in drag once too I did yeah yeah but he you know that was a great I'm gonna tell uh, you, great night Todd's a great guy but he better stay a guy because as a goateed <laughs> woman there was nothing sexy happening. about him no so yeah he was looking kind of meme ish that yeah, yeah. that night <laughs> um but he, here is a uh, uh for some reason these 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 musicians they think in music because that's yeah. how come that's how come Wayne did that song to you and here is a short clip of a song that Todd did for his mother at her passing you said, don't worry they'll find a cure but I see it in your eyes this time you're not so sure just hold your hand and never let go out of it So since you, since you're um, you know I know you're focused on beating this battle and mm -hmm. and you're actually do your prognosis is pretty good. It is. Um, you know I'm not sure what the next step is yet. I have a rare blood disease as well, mm -hmm. and so this whole process they've really had to take that into consideration. One of the reasons my mom didn't make it is she had the blood disease as well, and um, the chemotherapy and going through uh, cancer with the blood disease. It's kind of a double whammy. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot going on, so I'm not sure what the next step is. Um, but it is good. I mean, I, I caught this cancer really early. It was stage two, uh, but it was a very small tumor, you know. And and um, I opted to be very aggressive. I did a double mastectomy. I actually had another tumor in my right breast uh, that was precancerous. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, it, the prognosis is good, and, and I feel good, you know, I'm tired, sore, uh, but it's, uh, it's um, I think the hardest part about this, uh, definitely for me, I would take the physical pain over the emotional side mm -hmm. of this any day. Yeah, how, yeah, you know, just like, I'm a wimp. You know, like most guys, I'm a wimp. And the idea, I can deal with the known, mm -hmm. but the unknown, do you have to, do you have to, 
just take it day by day or do you I try do. not to reflect? No. I do. Sometimes, some days it's hour by hour, literally. Um, you know, it's it's been really crazy and I'm so fortunate because I do have a very big uh, support network. You know, I have great friends and family and my boyfriend has been really amazing through this. So I think, you know, you have to have that support and there are days where I feel crappy and sorry for myself and, you know, how could this be happening to mm -hmm. me? Um, but I think, you know, a strong person, you you do feel those feelings. You just don't stay in them. And so I'm kind of able to, you know, my mom used to tell me, allow yourself to feel any feeling that's coming up. Uh, you know, just always go for the good aspects of it and, and try to kind of stay on right. that positive light. So do you have, uh, I think you once told me that, uh, do you have the gene like, An is it Angelina Jolie? The BRCA gene? Yeah. Um, there's a few different genes that you can test for as far as the BRCA gene goes. I tested positive for one, but not the other two. So um, I had, I'm not really sure how to explain it, but so I won't have to have like a hysterectomy or anything like that. Mm. If I had tested positive for the other gene, the other BRCA gene, I would have had to have uh, a hysterectomy because um, that's very related, your right. uh, you know, uterine cancer and, and breast right. cancer. And, and the interesting related. sometimes is there seems to be a connection between mothers who've had breast cancer and then prostate disease in men. There's, there's, there's some weird connections. Yeah. Talking about Angelina, um, and on the show, uh, Todd kind of implied he might be Brad Pitt. It, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I watched that. Yeah, he said that I was like Angelina Jolie, which which I then, mean, go me. Yeah, but then I'm, then he's Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, so d is this going to is this going to change the way you approach helping people with cancer and you know helping raise money? You know, I don't think I don't think it's going to change. I uh, since my mom passed away, I mean. I've been on the Relay for Life committee here in the Northeast Kingdom uh, since 2001, and I'm one of the longest standing committee members. Um, and I just, I think it just makes it that much more personal for me, and I'm going to try even harder to make sure that I do everything I can, you know, to help, whether it's helping a family who's going through it, uh, or it's helping women realize that. You know, you, you have to be proactive and you have to do self-checks and, and, you know, it doesn't matter um, mm. any of the uh, different circumstances you might be in as far as family mm. history or your age. It, it takes a few minutes and even if you're doing it once a month, you know. You know, tell me, you, I know you're a woman, but you've dealt with guys in your life, all your life. Do you, to me, I find that women are far more in tune with themselves and we're a bunch of boneheads. <laughs> Uh, do you know? Do you think? Do you think? Uh, you know, in your in your research into cancer, it would seem like with us, by the time cancer we are diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. that is much more aggressive or much further along. And I'm I'm talking about stereotypically because right. I just don't think men. No, I'm not one of them. But I, as in, I'm not one of the people who puts off things. I try not to. Uh, but I do think men have a, they're boneheaded about some of these procedures because yeah. it makes them a little squeamish or something. I think um, men tend to kind of put things off and it's better to not know than to know. You know it, what I mean? But uh, for me, I want to know. I mean, if I, if there's a chance, um, you know, that I'm, I'm going to get breast cancer, I, you know, I would want to, I tried to get tested for the breast cancer gene before any of this happened years and years ago. My insurance wouldn't cover it. Mm -hmm. You know, but I wanted to know where I think sometimes guys tend to lean towards, you know, well, if I, if I don't know, then it's not really happening. Yeah. You know, and I have a tendency because, you know, I've, I've said this right along. I've said this on numerous shows. Women are the stronger sex. You're the smarter sex. You know, we, you can let us think that we are. <laughs> it's not true. Yeah. Well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, because as long as I have known you, and I, I that must be going on a decade now, because you were at the radio, I think you started at the radio station about the same time I did. I think so. It was 2006 was the first year that I started uh, at MOVE. Okay, I, I was there a little bit earlier, because I remember when I was in legislature, I okay. used to I used to go up. So, uh, so I've known you for quite some time, and you've always been the Pied Piper of cancer, as in, 
when I say cancer research, m raising money, and no matter what, you and Todd uh, bunked out in a truck more than once uh, for the hunger yeah. fest and uh, so on. Do you ever say to yourself, go figure, I've done this for so many people, mm -hmm. why me? Do you I do. That? Yeah, I have those those moments. Um, you know, when when I first was diagnosed, everything happened very quickly, and um, you know, I was diagnosed, and then it was a bunch of doctor's appointments, and then you know the tumor was growing, so then it was surgery, and and I don't know if I really had time to process exactly what was happening. Everything was moving very quickly. I was kind of going through the motions and just trying to figure out what was coming next. So after the surgery, and, and since I've been home, I haven't been, you know, working, I've really had time to kind of process this and think about things. And, you know, there I spend more days than not uh, in tears. And sometimes it's happy tears. You know, sometimes it's mm -hmm. I'm crying because of the support I've gotten. Sometimes I'm crying because I'm angry, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sad and, you know, it isn't fair. And sometimes, um, you know, just it's it's overwhelming the entire experience. <laughs> I know what the uh, I shouldn't laugh, but at, the way you said it at the uh, um, at the concert was your boyfriend has had <laughs> a really you can he can leave the room. Literally. You're laughing and carrying on. Then he walks back yeah. in the room moments later, and you're sitting there in a a, a pool of tears. Yeah, and that's exactly how it's been. Uh, some days are better than others, but uh, for the most part, it's been a roller coaster, and, and I didn't realize I'm not I'm not that type of person. I'm the jokester. I was always the class clown. I make jokes to kind of deal with things, and and I'm that that person. Um, so to be on the other end of it and to be this vulnerable person who's crying all the time, it's horrific. <laughs> but. Um, you know, he's been really great and very patient with me. Now, does and, he have a name? Uh, Jake. His name is Jake. Jake Blaze, and and he's been he's been amazing. So I'm very lucky in that sense. And what was kind of uh, funny, um, we actually started dating right before all of this started. And I sat down with him after I was diagnosed. We had been together for just a couple weeks. Um, we had dated previously, but. Anyway, uh, so I sat down with him and I told him, I said, look, I understand if this is not, you know, this is not what you signed up for. You know, I, I totally get it if you just want to walk. And he was like, no, he's like, I'm, I'm in this, you know, for the long haul, so. Hmm. Uh, you know the one thing I got out of the concert too, and I've, I've talked to you on not so much about religion, but spirituality mm -hmm. is your mother's name keeps coming up and I know you feel that you know yeah. sh she's there for you and Wayne talked about that as well do, do you fall do you need that you of know? course you know this entire experience my mom has been there the entire way and there's so many um, just odd things uh, that just are not coincidences that have happened I firmly believe that my mom had something to do with me finding the lump um, I had a radiologist tell me, I don't know how you found this. I mean, this is so small, and most people wouldn't find this on their own. You know, and I did, and, and I made some lifestyle changes this, this year um, that actually made the recovery and the actual surgery, uh, you know, better and, and um, um, more forgiving as far as uh, the recovery time and everything. So there are certain things where I, I, I made choices, you know, in the, this year, made changes what have you and i didn't really know why mm -hmm. um and now you know i look back and and it all kind of makes sense but she's been very much a huge part of this and i think that that's important for me you know my mom my phone just fell my mom was <laughs> uh my was my best friend we were very very close and so for me to go through this um you know, when you're sick, who do you want? You want your mom, mm -hmm. you know? So to go through this without her, I, I'm not sure right. how I could do that. So it's, she's been there, most right. definitely. And you also have a close family on earth, too. I do, yeah. You know, I'm the youngest of four, and I'm lucky my, my whole family lives right here in this area. Um, so it's been nice to have them. Um, being the youngest, uh, I definitely take on the role of kind of the person that everybody turns to, however. So this has been very hard for my family. Um, you know, I'm, I'm Devaney. I'm not the one who 
is, you know, crying on the couch and them having to comfort me. I'm the one who's, you know, acting like an idiot to try to make you laugh because I know that you're having a having a bad day. So uh, it's it's amazing how different the dynamic has become in my family. But I think that you know it's it's beautiful to know that you know they are able to kind of uh, okay. come come around and, and help. Okay, and uh, we only have about a minute left. What are your final words to the viewers about anything? Uh, you know, I think basically the biggest thing is check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's my new slogan mm. uh, for women. I think you have to be proactive, you have to do self-checks, and early detection literally is your best protection. And, um, you know, I'm living proof that it can save your life, and, and uh, I just encourage women right. to you know, do whatever you need to do. Right. And I don't need to say it again, but I will, is you are a true hero. As Thank you. you. Uh, I, you know, you've done so much for the community, and I think the community knows it. But anybody who's willing to come on here, especially when they have cancer, I think it just, it just, it puts a face to the disease. It's in your face. Right. Yes, even Devaney, that happy voice right. can get cancer. Exactly. And, you know, if there's anybody sitting on the couch who hasn't been for a mammogram and you're supposed to, or us guys, if we're over, if we're 50 and above and you haven't gone for a colonoscopy, or women, yeah, that's right, that, that's a uh, go, really. I went yeah. for mine several months ago and I walked out of there and I laughed. I said, <laughs> I dreaded that. And just think there's people dying right. because they, exactly. won't, they won't go for it. Yeah. So, okay. Um, if you'd like to come back on as we go sure. on, as you go on in Definitely. your battle and you know, if there's anybody who can beat it, it's you. Well, thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. And thank you for all of your work. Um, I'm happy to help. Right. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice.